Hey everybody, this is Blue, and we're going to do a video about setting up an altar, which it can be very creative, very fun, it can really show who you are as a witch, or pagan, okay? Now, not everybody can set up an altar, um, and so we have to be careful at times for those who can't because you might still be living at home with some very Christian-oriented family members that would go nuts if they found out that you were honoring some of the old gods. Sometimes you don't have the space. I'm, I'm spoiled here because I am a homeowner, so I have a room that's devoted to my pastimes, so to say. So, you really, sometimes you have to have the space to set up a permanent altar like what I got here. Um, but let's get talking about setting it up. The absolute first thing you got to do is clean the area up. Um, we're talking physically cleaning it up and also spiritually, energy-wise, cleaning it up. Now, when I made my altar here, the very first thing I did was I emptied everything out of this room. This used to be my son's bedroom. And so, he's 20 now, so he doesn't live at home, for those who needed to know. Um, so I moved everything out of here, and then I cleaned it. Um, I started first by sweeping the floor, okay? You start from the opposite corner of the door and you sweep everything to the towards the door and you get it out, okay? You do not sweep it in the bed, in the room that you do in your altar. You sweep everything out first, then you grab your dustpan and sweep it up. It's the little details. If your room has a window, open it up and do what people call saging, smudging, burning incense, however you want to classify it, open up that window first and start on the opposite side of that window and you just let that smoke fill the room, you know, and get everything out the window, not out the door. If you have negative energies in the room, all you're doing if you put them out the door is just put them in another room. Don't do that. Get them out the window. Open up that window and push them out. Also, and this is very important, when you are saging, smudging, however you want to classify it, make sure that you are thinking positive thoughts. Um, it is great that you can push out any negativity, but you've got to replace it. So try to replace it with something positive. If you do not, the negative energy is going to be sucked back into the room, into the house, and all that. So always think positive. Okay? So we got the sacred space almost cleaned. Now everybody does different little extras and all that. I've done two extras on mine. Um, I put a line of sea salt on my window and on my doorway. You know, some people like to do that. And then the other thing that I did was I did the salt water, you know, where you get the bowl full of salt water and you dip your fingers in there, flip the water. Well, I did that all around the floor of my computer room slash also room. So, that's how I created my safe space, my sacred space. So then the next important thing to talk about is direction. Where you put your altar is very important. Uh, as you know, when you call in the corners out, you're calling out the four elemental powers. Okay, you know, north is earth, east is air, south fire, west is water. We know that. Well, those same attributes affect your altar. So you have to try to place it in a part that works for you. Now, most people will put their altar facing the north or the east, okay? And which makes sense because north is very grounding, it is solid, you know, it's a good, firm foundation. 
to the east because it is information. It is a great way to, you know, bring forth into your information and become more intellectual. Great thing. My altar is facing the west, uh, which is water, which is emotion, which is what I want, what I need. I could be a stoic person or I could be an emotional basket case at times. And so I put my altar on the west side trying to gain a little bit more control on my emotional side. There's also the thought on my part. The energies that we get for magic involve emotions. It's how we draw, that's how we focus, that's how we deliver. Sometimes we do it with passion, sometimes we do it with anger. Whatever the case it may be, emotion is energy. And so I have my altar face in the West because I want as much energy as I can when I am working on magic. Okay? So, those are the basics. Now comes the building the ritual. Your altar, sorry. Now this is mine. My altar. I love it. It is a permanent altar area because I have a little closet there. I got stuff here, and I got stands right here as well. Light a candle somewhere in the room, and start decorating your altar. Now your altar needs to reflect on your pathway a lot, but since your path is also a reflection on you, add the little things to make the altar yours. That is very important. Because if you do not feel comfortable in front of your altar, you cannot perform well at the altar. Now I would like to explain some of my altar setup. Now, no two altars should ever be the same. Um, you are unique and so your altar should reflect who you are. Now, I am creative, I like to work with my hands, and so I created these 16 figures that you're seeing here. I have eight male and eight female deities represented here. Um, many of you will know Kaliach, right here, who is the crone of Scotland. Okay, I being Celtic, that's uh, very important to me. And so we represent all of the different gods and goddesses in different states. I have one right here. And this is a representation of Bridget. So that's special to me. And I just got here blindly. All right. Rosemurta. trying to do this without knocking everything over. This one is going to be one that many of you probably haven't heard of. I've only found two references to it, but it was something that I needed to balance out my pantheon. Dwen. D-W-Y-N. Celtic goddess of love. And I just thought that was needed. Um, I can be cranky and all that at times, and so having a goddess of love, I thought, was needed. But we have healers, craftsmen, warriors, and that represented throughout here. Even Andraste, who is the female warrior goddess of victory. Uh, then I have a couple of stone uh, animal figures. I have a wolf, well it's actually a coyote, sorry, and uh, a raven. Um, these represent, you know, well if you know your totem animals you know what they represent. But anyway, then these little things right here. These are wooden cubes, one inch wooden cubes, and I have symbolism and words on here to represent protection. These are small protection um, things that I have built for my altar. 
they are to remind me, motivate me in all different ways. But that is my shelf. All right, now what's on my altar is also obviously very important. Um, on for this, I have my tools out here um, as well, just part of the demonstration. I have my wand, Oops. my adame, my chalice, and some people, it's not a pentacle, but it's what this one preserves. Um, this is a pure copper disc. I have a poem written on the back, and there are times where I will wear this when I'm doing some heavier magic. Um, this one right here. Now, for those of you who do not know, my actual full witch name is Blue Sage Dragon. Okay. And so when I saw this particular dragon, it was like, it's mine. I don't care how much it costs. I got it. And I have that on my altar to represent me. I am a part of this. And so it is important. I have bought the set of the God and Goddess um, statues because I do work with deities. I do honor them by having a representation of them directly on the altar and above my altar. So I, I talk in my videos about the, having a relationship um, with the gods and goddesses. Well, you should not be calling on a god or goddess if you do not have a relationship on them and expect them to work with you. So Right above my altar are my 16 gods and goddesses, and I do work with them. All right, um, I have a necklace here, has a triwin on it, and it's, I wear this also when I do ritual work. Um, I like to work with my hands. I made a wooden Celtic cross, and I keep that on my altar as well. Um, I use it to set tea lights on it when I light a tea light for my altar. Uh, this is a snowflake, snowflake agate heart. Now I love this particular piece because it is a combination of white and black. It represents life in balance. Okay. And that is something that's very important to me. Um, I found this at a garage sale. It is a tree uh, cut out to be a candle holder. So I also put two lights in this one and I energize my altar with this a lot. To me, it is a way of um, showing respect to life. Now the final three things on my altar that I always have on my well, on my altar are these. These are just um, made out of clay. Got three of them. Uh, for those of you who do not know, three is an important number for the Celts. Up in Scotland, and that there is a lot of standing stone formations, and so I used clay to build three for my altar so that it has a feel for Scotland in a way and they are on my altar and that's an important part of my altar. Now an altar if you can should represent a lot of things and mine does. It represents um, my love for Celtic uh, mythology and beliefs. But I use my altar also for spell work and other types of work. I hope you can see these on my camera. I'll make an adjustment. 
This used to be um, a dresser um, that I got from a house that we bought. Inside here, you're going to, I have so many little things that help me with my practice. I got my charcoal discs. I have incense sticks. I have a, a lot of incense in here. Um, and this is my little favorite piece right here. I'm an ordained minister, and so with this, I can go into churches and I, into hospitals, and I could talk to people that are going through a hard time. Um, I do have some of my witchcraft stuff in here, my bottles, and so. I always get a good stuffer. In this one, I doubt if you could see it, uh, I keep all my necklaces and my quartz are always kept. No, that's my solenite. Solenite. I keep my quartz in here. Now, a lot of people believe that you charge your quartz through moonlight, but you got to keep them away from sunlight. Uh, because you do not want to bleach your crystal. And so I keep my crystal, uh, I, actually I keep all my stones in here. Um, that way I can close the drawer and keep all the sunlight out of there. So I'm protecting my stones. I got some real beauties like this uh, peacock copper. I love that, just the colors. Um, I have some very interesting pieces. This is Elephant Jasper. Love that pattern. Um, but that's where I keep all my stones and minerals and crystals and all that so that I can use them, but they are protected. And then there's the big one. This big box right here has my tarot deck and this is actually where I store my atome and want. Um, I my mortar and pestle are in here, my crystal balls in here. I have a box where I keep stuff for to make mojo bags. All in there. It's part of the altar because it's you want all your stuff to be near your altar because you know if this is where the energy's at, this is where you want all the energy at for your spell work and such. Now, there's a motivation between this for this video. There's one thing you're gonna notice about my altar. It's clean. Keep your altar clean. One thing you might not be able to see, I know you can't see, I might edit the video just for you to see it. I have a curtain that separates my altar area with the rest of the room. It's my chrono screen curtain. Um, so it does two things. Is I use it to make my videos and also I use it to keep the dust out. I want my altar to be clean, and so it is very important to keep the dust out. Uh, the one piece I forgot to show is my sacrifice bowl, or my offering bowl. Nice earth tones, don't you agree? And then with that nature image of a deer and plants, to me this is a great pagan bowl. And so I keep this on my altar. And so like last night, I put some Palo Santo in there and I was trying to calm the room down and all that. And that's my work is I try to keep everything close by and not have everything, not have everything spread out. All right, now, the, I have a small little mini closet here right next to my altar that's also 
included into my altar area. Um, before I had all this set up, I had this wooden chest right here. And I used it to hold everything. So it was a mess at times. Now, I use it strictly to hold my candles. Such as this set of knob candle. Now this is used in prosperity growth. Uh, that's why it's green. So on this candle, you are supposed to light it and burn one bulb or bump a night for a week. That's why it's a seven bulb or seven knob candle. And in it, you're supposed, while it's burning, you are to do your prosperity work, however you do it and then stop it once it's got the one bulb done and at the end of the week when it's done you should you have completed it and it is supposed to bring you financial wealth so i have one and at times i have thought about using it but i've been trying to put it off you know and things have been working out a lot better for me so i haven't had any but i also have tea light candles of course different colors got my silvers golds greens burgundies blues whites and all that um so but it's strictly for candles i have a lot of stone work um well this ain't stone but himalayan sea salt or himalayan salt candle holder i got one of those um, this is a geode that my dad found me when he was doing some construction work. So that's always nearby. Um, this is a large piece of quartz. Um, I found this in this yard when I got the house. And so it's kept in here. Uh, because I just love quartz and I just love this piece. Stones are important. I have a lot of stone work. I have well, a lot of stones. I have pieces of quartz in here. Um, large jaspers, some marbles, sodalite. I have a little bit of everything in here. Um, because, of course, you never know when you're going to need it. I have various altar tiles here. Uh, this is one I made many years ago. Um, you can tell by the black rings. I've done a lot of burning cone incenses on it. <laughs> I've tried to work in teaching people how to make wands. And here are two of the extra ones that I have created that are used to help teach people how to make wands. Um, very simple. Um, so I always thought that was cool. And both boxes, but this one's better. Uh, smudging and sage sticks. This used to be a cigar holder, and so I put my sage in this, and it helps protect it, keep the moisture out, so it burns well. And then that's all craft. Okay. But anyway, you see how this altar area is used. We, we've talked about how we clean it for it, how we build it. How it reflects who you are. Um, most of the time I try to stay organized, but there are some times when you got all this stuff that you just can't. And there we go. And remember, keep your altar clean, try to keep it organized. Um, because it is like a machine, it is like circuitry. You have to have it, a clean path for the energies to go for it to work. And so I have my representations, I have my tools, I have everything 
where I need them to be, like my um, stone heart that I was telling you about. It's always kept in the center of the altar because it is all about balance. And we want the energies to go through there equally and without any obstructions. So I hope that this video has helped you out a little bit on setting up an altar. Um, maybe I've inspired you in some way. I hope so. Uh, please leave your comments below and everybody please take care. Be at peace. And here is the inspiration for this video. This is an image from Emily777's altar. Now, people have the right to be as creative as they want with their altar. That is not what I'm complaining about. Just look how dirty it is and how thrown together it is. There doesn't seem to be a form of balance, which might not be something important to this person, obviously, but it's the dirt. Look at all the ash on it. That pile. It does not look clean, and you want to show respect and all that for the deities if you work with any. And it just looks like this was thrown together and it hasn't been cleaned in months. And I just can't picture this type of altar working for anybody. So please keep your altars clean. And make sure that you have some type of reason for the system that it is. All right. So everybody take care. Be peace.